The dreaded green goo. So we've had a question in from Jake. He's done a recent EICR and he's found green goo or green exudation in the sockets behind the switches and he's asking for some advice on what he should do in that situation. We've been asked this a few times so we thought we'd cover it in a bit of detail. So first of all, let's try and explain what that green goo is. So the green goo, the exudation, it's a reaction between decomposing plasticizer and the copper in the copper conductors. And those two react and you get the green goo inside the cable and then in the terminals. To understand what plasticizer is, plasticizer is one of the key components when you're making PVC compounds. It's the bit that adds all the flexibility into the compound. There's a massive variation of plasticizers. You can use all different types and then you get all different grades. Some are stabilized, unstabilized, and then you can put additives, additives in there as well. So it's a massive spectrum of things that people can do differently with their compounds. So what can cause the plasticizer to be stripped out of the PVC and then decompose? So there's some external factors that you can consider. Close proximity with paint such as creosote can have a negative effect and the plasticizer is pulled out. And also contacts with some materials like polystyrene. And interestingly that's the reason why if you buy a new TV, Xbox, PS5, any electrical equipment, they put the cable inside there inside of a plastic bag and all that is is a barrier to stop it being in contact with the polystyrene because the plasticizer will then be stripped out of the compound. The plasticizer decomposing also happens naturally in every PVC compound. So over time the plasticizer will decompose. Things that can accelerate that is high temperatures. So something operating at a high temperature will cause that breakdown to happen faster. Two of the key things that happen in insulation practice is a loose terminal or overloading that circuit. So they're the two main things where higher temperatures will cause the cable lifespan to decrease. One important thing to note is that people will see a cable. So this one is a Doncaster Cables cable. This one is another supplier. And you'll see the PVC and people just assume they're the same because they look the same. The color might be a bit different. The compounds inside different manufacturers' cables are completely and utterly different. So we've got specific grades in our PVC compound plant. We've got that on site. We can control what additives come in there. And then somebody else could use different plasticizers, different additives. With that, there's manufacturing decisions to make. So you can use a higher grade stabilized plasticizer and put additives in such as antioxidants and it will prevent that breakdown of PVC at high temperature for a longer period of time. And this is what reputable, high quality manufacturers generally do. And on the other side, if you're going for the cheapest product in the marketplace, you wouldn't be looking to add those additives in. You'll be looking for the cheapest form of compound. The lifespan of that product will then be shrunk because that breakdown point will occur sooner than on this cable. It appears on all cables, but the lifespan of a high quality cable will be longer than a cheaper, inferior quality cable. So let's now discuss what this means in your install if you found green goo, or greening as it's sometimes called, in your installation. And what should you do about it? So when the plasticizer comes out of the cable and it starts decomposing, the PVC becomes more brittle because the plasticizer's job is to keep it flexible. In a fixed installation, if the cable's not moving, the cable may still then perform correctly and there may be no need to actually make any changes to the installation. But if the cable moves, it will be more brittle. There's a higher chance of insulation, sheathing breakdown, short circuits, and potentially a fire risk in there as well. The plasticizer itself is a clear, oily liquid. That itself is not conductive. There's no real health issues with that. Some manufacturers, different countries, actually put extra plasticizer into the cables so it leaches out onto the outside and makes it easier to pull cables through conduit. So there's no issue with a clear liquid on the outside of the cable. However, when that plasticizer reacts with copper oxide, it then becomes green, and that's the bit that you see. The green goo is then conductive. So that is a conductive material when it's green, when it's clear, it's not conductive. And that's because it's a mix with the copper oxide in there. The decision of whether to rewire the property or not rewire the property is a very difficult one. Um, it can only really be done by the electrician and it needs to be done by doing those tests, insulation resistance being the main one. Are the cables still fit for purpose with good IR readings or are they not? General practice, the best advice would be to rewire the property, but sometimes that isn't possible. So if that isn't possible, 
there are some guidance steps that you can do if you can't rewire the property. The steps if you can't rewire the property, best advice, more frequent periodic inspections. So you need to be doing those inspections more frequently. You've identified something that's a risk. The green goo inside the sockets, terminals, connections, that needs to be removed. We advise you wear gloves. But remember that part's conductive, so we need to be cleaning those outlets and getting all that goo out of the outlets and the connections. We'd then be advising those regular checks, always doing insulation resistance. But one thing that you might want to look to add is conductor resistance. So you could take conductor resistance measurements from the install, record those so you've got a benchmark, and then in your periodic inspections in the future, you can then re-measure the conductor resistance and check back. Because the copper oxidising can affect the conductor resistance of the cables. If the resistances are getting higher, the cables are going to run warmer, and then the breakdown of that compound will accelerate even further, up to the point where you could get that failure um, and a higher risk of short circuits. So hopefully, Jake, that answers your question about the green goo and the options that you've got in there. Again, we always go back to this, but we'd always advocate using a high quality, reputable cable from a reputable cable manufacturer. There's people in the marketplace that are making decisions like us to have the higher quality premium products. We're considering these things in the manufacturing stages. We're making higher quality PVC compounds. We're putting the additives in there to give it a longer lifespan. And unfortunately now, the UK market is flooded with cheaper products where everyone's battling it out for the cheapest price. And with that, to win those orders, generally you're de-engineering the product, cheaper plastics, less additives, and then the cable failing sooner than a high quality, reputable cable manufacturer.